Welcome back everyone to our second of three example videos for surfaces of revolution using integration and calculus. So in this one we are going to be revolving a piece of y equals square root x about the x-axis. So here you can see I've got a piece of that function revolving about the x-axis, particularly on the interval uh, from x equals 1 to x equals 6. We get this surface over here, and I've got my surface area formula also written down here in the corner. So let's go ahead and set up the pieces that we need. So our function is going to be the y equals square root x, so f of x will be root x. Also could think of that as x to the 1 half power because we're going to need to do the derivative for our formula. It's one of the first things we do. So our f prime of x power rule, we would get the 1 half comes out front. Subtract 1 from that would give us x to the negative 1 half. We might want to see that as 1 over 2, and then this is really the reciprocal of the square root of x. So we would get 2 and the root would actually be on the bottom for our f prime. When I square that, maybe it's easier to see with the root written that way. We might see then when we square this, we get 1 on the top, the 2 becomes a 4 on the bottom, and then the square root of x squared would give us just x there in the denominator. So we'll go ahead and put that into our formula. So we'll get that the surface area is equal to 2 pi. My interval was 1 to 6, so we'll go ahead and say from 1 to 6. My original function was square root x. And then my root with 1 plus f prime squared is going to be 1 plus, and f prime squared is 1 over 4x dx. Now, it's a little odd to do a u substitution here, and it's not going to work out so well. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and use properties of roots. Okay, so just a little aside here. Uh, a property of roots, if I have something like the square root of 3 times the square root of 5, I can multiply those together and get the square root of 15 multiplying under the root. So we're going to do a similar thing here in that I am going to multiply this and think of distributing the x in this root into this problem here. So we will go ahead and get 2 pi integral from 1 to 6 of combining these roots and distributing the x. x times 1 would give me x here. And then x times the 1 over 4x, the x's would reduce, and I would simply get 1 fourth there dx. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and do this just as a more basic u substitution. We'll be using that u is x plus 1 fourth. And then du, the derivative of this, would just be 1 dx. Or we could just say du equals dx. And that makes an easy substitution for us over here. So if I go ahead and leave my bounds in terms of x, leaving me just a little bit less work to do. So that'll be x equals 1 to x equals 6. Uh, the x plus 1 fourth under the root just becomes root u, and dx becomes exactly du. You can go ahead and think of this now as a power rule, if you would like. So we'll have 2 pi from x equals 1 to x equals 6, really u really u to the one-half du. And then our power rule gives us, when we do the antiderivative, that we should get an increased power of 1, so a half plus 1 would give us u to the three-halves. Dividing by three-halves is like multiplying by two-thirds, so we'll go ahead and have that. And again, our bounds are x-bounds, so from x equals 1, to x equals 6. Let's go ahead and change back to x now. So I'll replace my u. I'm going to go ahead and multiply my 2 thirds times my 2 pi here. So 2 times 2 thirds would give me 4 thirds pi. And then replacing my u, I would get x plus 1 fourth. 
to the three halves. From one to six. Okay, we'll go ahead and put our bounds in. So we have four pi over three. If I plug in six, I would get six and one fourth, which would end up being 25 over four to the three halves minus, and if I plug in one, one plus one fourth would end up being five over four. That is five over four to the three halves. Okay, so we're going to do some simplifying here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just do the square root part of each first, so I don't lose anybody hopefully too much here. So the half part of the power is square root. So if I square root 25 over four, that's going to give me five on top and two on the bottom, and then I will have cubed minus, if I do the same thing here, the square root, I get the square root of five and I get two on the bottom. And so we'll have that cubed as well. Okay, let's go ahead and finish this up. So we will get four pi over three times, five cubed would be 125, two cubed would be eight minus, if I have the square root of five cubed, remember that's like having three copies. And so two of those copies are going to give me a five. So I actually get five root five. Two cubed on the bottom again is going to give me eight. Okay, so next I think I will go ahead and reduce my four with my eights. So the four will become a one and these will become a two both of those on the bottom there. So we will go ahead and say that this is pi. Uh, if I take three times two, bump the two out, I guess that really gives me a six on the bottom. So pi over six times the quantity 125 minus five root five. We'll go ahead and leave our answer like that. Now remember this is surface area and area should be in square units. So this will be pi over six, quantity 125, minus five root five units squared. Okay, that is our second example worked out for surfaces of revolution from calculus using integrals. We've got one left. Check out our example three video. We'll see you then.